when I went up to Pennsylvania, I could just, I could feel that God had something for me there. I didn't know what, I, an answer to something. I didn't know what question. I studied quite a bit in the book of John. Now, you're going to find most of my scriptures out of John today because I was working on it so hard because I kind of felt maybe it was something there. But it wasn't. He gave me the answer to a question I have had since I first started going to God's church. I've, ever since I started going to God's church. It's a question that has troubled me. And he gave me the answer about 30 times, and I didn't catch it. I have to tell you. Little buddy again. That little guy has given me more sermons. Anyhow, what he would do, <clears throat> he slept in, now the cabin has two bedrooms and a living room and kitchen and so on combined. Now, he does not like to sleep in the bedroom with me. At Becky's, I locked the door. He doesn't like it. He can't get out. But anyhow, he would sleep in there. Well, when the sun's coming, you know, about ready for sun up, it's daylight. I'd hear his little feet over the rug. He would sit down beside my bed, just sit there and look up at me. Not bark, not do anything, just sit there and look at me. Of course, what he's saying is it's time to get up. Well, I'd open an eye and look out and throw a hand down. He'd play with it a little bit, and I'd play with him a little bit. Then I would make this statement, it is too early go back to bed. Good night. He would turn, and every time, he would turn right around, walk back in, climb back in his uh, bed, and I don't know if he slept or not, but he would stay there. Now, about a half hour later, he's back in there. <laughs> Forget it this time. We're not buying that too early stuff. <laughs> well, by then, I was ready to get up anyhow. Now, that, that told me something, only I didn't recognize it. Not until we were walking, uh, probably around the end of July, and I even have a picture of where I was, and we were walking around the lake, and it just struck me right out of the blue. Only this time, it was a scripture that God gave me. I'll tell you what the answer is, and then I'll go and tell you what the question was. It, it struck me as I was walking, and Christ said, it is not yet my time. It is not yet my time. Now, that really meant something to me. But then as I reflected later, I was telling Buddy the same thing. It's too early. It's not yet my time. And now, what kind of a question could I ask that that would answer? <clears throat> now, by the way, the title of this sermon is, It is not yet my time. Here's the question. And I imagine some of you have probably had the same question. Why, my good old why, does God not heal instantly today? Now, I know there have been some occasions. I, I can remember two people that I prayed for and anointed, and they were healed instantly. Uh, my second son was healed instantly one time. Uh, we thought, the, or my, my sister-in-law thought he had appendicitis. Uh, he was just screaming in pain. And we were in Akron, Ohio, and the minister was in, in, in Pittsburgh. And uh, he was just screaming in pain. It's before you were around, Becky. <laughs> and uh, we call, I called the minister and told him you know, that, that he was you know, in pain and so on. So he said, I'll pray for him. I hung the phone up and turned around. He's laying there in, in Pat's arms, sound asleep. Never had a problem since. But strangely enough, I just thought of this sitting there as thinking about my sermon. He did have appendicitis, I think it was in Iceland or somewhere, when he was in the Air Force, and had his appendix removed. Anyhow, now that was instant. Uh, God does a few of them, yes. We generally don't hear that much about them. I might say, why not? But why doesn't he heal everyone instantly? Well, he made a promise to us. Let's turn to Matthew. Matthew, and I'll, I'll give you a few of the answers I've had given to me. Well, he doesn't heal because it's not his will. What? It's, not his, it's his will for you to be sick? Since when? Where do you read that in the Bible? It's just exactly the opposite. He says, I want you well, and so on. So I don't buy that one at all. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. 
And I'll get to the meaning of it. It's not my time yet. But let's see what he said here in three or four scriptures. Matthew 21, verse 21 through 23. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly I say to you, if you have faith and you do not doubt, you will, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, because remember he, had the, he, he cursed the fig tree and it withered. Boom. He says, But also if you say to this mountain, Be moved and be cast into the sea, it will go. It will be done. And whatever, here's what I really want, and whatever thing you ask... Now, he didn't put a limitation on that, did he? Whatever thing you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. All right, do we believe when you're being anointed? Do you believe when I lay hands on you, I'll put some oil on you, that God is going to heal you? Now, do you believe he's going to do it now? Or do you think, well, he may take a week. I had never read a place in the Bible where Christ anointed someone or laid hands on them or said be healed and a week, week later. Not one time. It was now. Instant. Instant. Now there has to be a reason. And I won't buy the thing, well, we don't have enough faith. He says if you have the faith of, of a mustard seed. Do you know how big a mustard seed is? I had one once. I put it in an envelope that was so tiny, about the size of a pinhead. I think Pat sent that letter to somebody. My, my, my mustard seed went with him. <laughs> but anyhow, he says, whatever you ask. Let's look at another one, Mark. Mark. Now, Christ keeps his word, does he not? You see, there is a reason. There is a reason why he doesn't. And we're going to get to it. Mark 11, verse 23 through 26. And as surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, oh, this is the same one. Okay, let's skip that one. I, I've got too many to read. John 15. John 15. And verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and, and appointed that you uh, should uh, go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. Now, of course, we understand that faith is connected with that. We already read that. We also understand it has to be within God's will. I don't think it's God's will for me to say, um, Mount, uh, whatever, uh, uh, Matterhorn. Yeah, Mount Matterhorn, be moved into the Mediterranean Sea. Don't think that's what he has in mind, you see. So, yes, I'll, I'll admit that. But for you to be healed, now, we're not talking something that's against God's will. Now, understand also, I'm saying, we are going to die of something. I don't see why it has to be painful, though. It wouldn't it be nice to go to bed some night and you don't wake up? That'd be very pleasant. That was Pat's desire. Well, she got just exactly the opposite. But it's not, it is God's will that you be healed. Now, I know I've, I've heard ministers, I've, I've asked ministers way back in Worldwide about it. And they, well, it just wasn't God's will. And they always put it in the prayer, don't they? If it be God's will, there's your cup out. Well, I wasn't healed. You have no idea. Well, it wasn't God's will. No, I'm sorry. I don't buy that. I don't buy that. But there is a reason. Well, let's go on. And when we understand that reason, it's going to make a big difference. A big difference. Because the day is coming when he is going to heal instantly. Whomever. Now, I don't know. He may give that uh, power to all of you. Whomever you say, get up out of that uh, deathbed and walk out of here. And they get up and walk out. That day is coming. Because before this is all over, God wants the world to know who his people are. And he can't do it by, you know, here, read the Bible, you see my people. Uh, you can't do it by saying, well, the ones that keep the Sabbath. Well, the Jews keep the Sabbath. Uh, the Seventh-day Baptists, and I'm not condemning them. They may be with God, I don't know. Uh, but they surely don't do any of the other things, the, the Seventh-day Adventists and so on. So we can't say, well, that's the big key. But the big key is 
when you walk into a hospital and you go from room to room to room to room and say, be healed, get out of that bed and get out of here. And they get up and jump up and run out. Then you sit down at the front of the uh, hospital and everybody's coming up there sick. They be healed and they walk away sick. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, is that going to catch anyone's attention? Mm, I think so. I think so. Two people, or two groups of people for sure, doctors for one, because they just lost their income. But there's nobody in the hospital paying a bill. And, and uh, uh, preachers for another, because how long are people going to stay in their church when they see the church of God, the house of God, healing people? Think about it. How did, God, how did Christ attract people to him? Not by going out and saying, you've got to keep the Sabbath, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. He did it by healings. He did it by healings. And what did he get him into? Mm, much trouble. We'll get to that. John 16, one more. John 16, 23. And in that day you will ask me nothing... Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now, of course, there are others we could read, but, uh, well, let's do read one more. I've got it written down. 14, 13 through 17. 14, 13 through 17. And whatever you ask in my name, uh, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You see, you, now, moving uh, the Matterhorn, how does that glorify God? But... But if you command someone to rise up and walk, or better yet, someone that's been blind from birth. Now, you're going to say, well, yeah, but we had these healers on TV. They're fakes. How, how, how far around the world would it go if some guy walked in there unblind and be healed? Oh, I can see now. But he could see all along. That's what they do on TV. He could see all along. If you watch long enough, you'll see him come in again later on in another another city, or some cripple come up. How do you know he was crippled from birth? How do you know he was even crippled? I'm going to give you one at the end that just, it turns me cold to even think about. And the conditions that I got to that end, it turns me even colder. All right, now, chapter 14. Now, that's where we are, yeah, uh, of uh, John. Let's look at verse 12. 14.12 Most assuredly I say to you he who believes in me and the works that I do he will do also Ooh, did you read that correctly? And greater works What can you do that is greater than what Christ did? Well, how about having someone healed and is seen around the world instantly? And it will not be a fake. And everybody will know it won't be a fake because it's impossible to be a fake. I'm going to keep your curiosity up on that one. Would that be greater? I think so. How many people saw Christ heal somebody? Oh, what, a hundred people? Of course, word spread of it, understand. But he says you'll do greater works. Greater works. And he's talking about his people today. Acts 10th chapter. Acts 10, and uh, I want verse 34. God is not a respecter of persons. 10.34, then Peter opened his mouth, and he said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Now, did the disciples heal instantly? My, even Peter's shadow passing over somebody. Even his shadow passing over somebody. Yes, there, there are several accounts of them healing people. And it says they healed everyone that came to them. Now, is God a respecter of persons? He's not going to give us that power? It has to be for a reason, though. Oh, yeah, he won't do anything without a reason. Because he wants the world to know. <clears throat> Did you ever stop and wonder... How the great multitudes are going to be called at the end time. We've got 144,000 Revelation. Oh, I've got it written down. What, what is that? Revelation 7. 144,000 and a great multitude. What's going to attract them? Some guy saying, oh, you've got to keep Sabbath. It says right here in the Bible. Huh. That doesn't attract anyone today, does it? Miracles of healing? 
Whoa. It attracted the, uh, the people in Christ's day. It attracted the Pharisees, the Sadducees, where they said, I want to kill that guy. He's taken away our income, our parishioners. We aren't going to have anybody tithing to us. Well, that basically says that. All right, he is not a respecter of persons, so he's not, he's not, not healing instantly today because he doesn't respect us or doesn't recognize us as the people and so on. No way. The time isn't right yet. There's the answer. The time is not right yet. John. Let me show you. John 2. Everything with God is timing. Christ's own death was timed exactly accurately. It had to be. John 2, 4. <clears throat> now, this is the first miracle he does. This is where he turns the water into wine in Cana. 2, 4. His mother comes to him and says, Son, I got a problem. We're out of wine. And he said to her, Woman, what does that concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour has not yet come. Now, by hour, he meant my time. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, let's look at two more scriptures, and then we'll find out. John 7, 6. John 7, 6. Uh, and Jesus said to them, My time has not yet come. But your time is always ready. And he's talking here. Uh, they, they wanted him to go in, in, in this chapter 7. They wanted him to go into the Feast of Tabernacles. Up here in verse 1 or 2, it says the Feast of Tabernacles. Just go up here and show them your miracles. Wow, you know, let the world see. <coughs> now, what do you mean my time hasn't come yet? If he does this too early... And he gets them too upset and too angry with him too early. They may kill him on um, Feast of Tabernacles. Does that make him your Messiah? No way. He has to die on Passover. His time hadn't come yet. He's timing it. They're already, you read through John, it's interesting. They're, they want to kill him right up here in the, I think it's the third, third chapter of John. They're ready to kill him. I've got, I think I've got a few scriptures I'll read to you on that. They want to kill him. They don't like what he's doing. Nobody would like you going around healing people. Oh, now the people will. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, the cripples and the blind and so on, and those with cancer and everything, they'll flock to you. They're the only ones, though. Everybody else is going to hate you. And I was thinking about this uh, this morning also. I wonder... If we would just say right here, you know, just as an example, all of us had that kind of power, and we told the media, because the media is going to be on your back immediately. Where would you get that power? Who are you? Where are you from? What church do you belong to? And so on. And you told them, well, I belong to the church of God. And do you think persecution is going to be coming? Oh, in a heartbeat. What's going to really turn people against you? In a heartbeat. And I got the warning, do you suppose the other churches of God out there would appreciate that? I don't know. They might even turn against you. Well, it does say brother will turn against brother and so on. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out as, a, as an idea. Uh, it's something I'm willing to deal with. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to back down. All right. Uh, Matthew 7, oh, yeah, let's read verse 8 while we're right here. Uh, you go up to, to the feast, he says. I am not yet ready to go up to the feast. You see, because he goes up, he's going to heal people and so on, and it's going to get him, them angry at him too early. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> let's take a look at a few of Christ's healings just to uh, see how they were done and so on. Uh, the first one in John 4:46. Through 54. So Jesus came again to Canaan of Galilee. That's where he had just done the miracle of the water, uh, where he had made the water into wine. And uh, there was a certain nobleman there whose son was sick at Capernaum. Now, Capernaum is quite a ways away. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and he implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Now, here's a man that comes up to Christ and says, I need you to come down and anoint my son. He's dying. He's just about dead. 
Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people uh, see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Now there it is. He told us himself. Uh, That's John, the fourth chapter, and I'm in verse 48. He's telling us himself what attracts people. Miracles. Now, we have seen so many on TV. You know, you've seen old David Copperfield. I saw him make an airplane disappear. Made a Statue of Liberty. Now, that's all fake. We know that. Statue of Liberty disappear and so on. I saw him walk through the, the uh, China, Great China Wall. And, I, boy, I don't know how they do that. <laughs> I sometimes wonder <laughs> if maybe this guy doesn't have a demon helping him. And, but uh, th- these, these are tricks they do. Now, we have that on TV so much. Uh, people are going to say, uh, that's fake. That's fake. I'm still beating you up. Will you hear my last one? Will you hear my last one? Okay, where am I here? Oh, let me go on. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down uh, before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed and uh, what Jesus had said to him. And uh, let's see, he went down to his servant, and his son was still alive, and he inquired of them the hour that he had gotten better. And they said to you, Yesterday at seven hours the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour in which Christ had told him your son will live. You see, it wasn't a day later, a week later. Oh, he got better slowly and so on. Now, I'm not condemning those things. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm, I'm talking now about instant healing. That was an instant healing. And Christ wasn't even there. Isn't it ironic? Lazarus was laying there sick and dying. And Christ did not, even, not only not go to him, he didn't say, nah, uh, be healed. He let him die. Of course, that was the final straw, you understand. And I always do that at the Passover time. To make sure those Pharisees would kill him. I mean, boy, they did. Immediately, so they started really uh, plotting now. They'd wanted to capture him before. Now they're saying, we need a, a way to get him. We need a betrayer, you know, to identify him and so on. So Christ is in control. He knew that boy would be healed. And he, uh, it doesn't say boy or child or whatever. And he was. All right, chapter 5 of John, and uh, verse 5 through uh, 9. Now, a certain man was there. This is by the pool of, uh, I believe it's Cylon, where the water ripples. And a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. Do you suppose those people knew he had this infirmity? (laughs) He couldn't get up and walk. That's how bad it was because he, well, we'll read it. Then Jesus saw him laying there, and he said to him, uh, uh, let's see, uh, do you want to be made well? And No, he didn't ask him how much faith he had. Do you want to be made well? Well, what do you think the average person would say if you walked in the hospital? Well, yeah. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Of course, now, whose faith are you using here? We're using your faith in this case whose faith was used in Lazarus coming out of the grave Christ's faith the sick man answered him says sir I have no one to put me in the pool when the water trembles and so on then verse 8 then Jesus said to him rise take up your bed and walk well what happened a year later he was laying there and he took up his bed and walked (laughs) now look immediately He said you would do the same thing, only even greater ones. Immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. Now, I'm not going to take time to read all this, but the Pharisees had a conniption. Because, first of all, he's got his bed, carrying his bed on the Sabbath. And then then they questioned him being a cripple or not. They even called his parents. Has he really been a cripple? And so on. But my point is, you see, he did it now. It was impressive now. Suppose he'd have been well a year later. <laughs> well, what, what did his saying, rise up and walk, have to do with it, you see? It has to be now for people to see and identify and know. And know. And it's going to have to be people that the world knows were sick, not fakes. It's easy to make fakes. Ninth chapter of John. Let's look at a couple more. Ninth chapter of John. And uh, let's do the first 16 verses. 
Now Jesus was passing by. He saw a man who was blind from birth. From birth. Now here's another one where they question him afterwards. And even his parents said, are you sure he was blind when he was born? <laughs> See, they just don't want to believe that this, as they call him, a sinner, was able to do this. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Now notice Christ's answer. Neither. This man was uh, sin, nor his parents sin, uh, you know, to cause the blindness, but that the work of God should be revealed in him. Should be revealed in him. In other words, here is a young man, obviously blind. Everybody around there knows it. So how are you going to fake it? How are you going to fake it? I must work the work of uh, him who sent me, which is uh, this day. The night is coming when no one can work. Of course, that's after he dies. As long as I am in the world, I am uh, the light of the world. Then he said to these, uh, of these things, spit on the ground. He made some clay. He rubbed it on the guy's eyes. <clears throat> and he gave him something to do. Now, this one is slightly different. This one actually takes a little bit of faith. He said, that, let's see, go wash in the pool of Ceylon. Now, had the man said, you got to be kidding, man. That's going to make me uh, see. I knew you were fake and walk away. Would he have been healed? No way. But he went and washed, and immediately he could see. Not only see, he could recognize what he saw. Do you know someone who's been blind all their life cannot recognize things? I, I read an account one time. This, this man had been blind all his life, and they did an operation, and he could see. And they held things up to him, like they held up, a, 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 I think it was a ball. They said, What's this? He said, I don't know. Let me touch it. <laughs> See, when he touched it, then he would recognize it. <clears throat> the, the, the man that was a cripple laying on his bed there, he got up and walked. That's not possible. You have to go through rehab and so on uh, if, if you have never walked before. You don't know how. You see, these are total, total miracles, way, way beyond any kind of medical uh, explanation. But anyhow, this gets interesting. They, they, they accuse Christ there as well. Oh, let's see. Matthew 8. Let me read just two, three more here. Matthew 8. I want to, I want to really put my point across. Matthew 8 and 8 through 13. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy. And this is basically the same one, only this was a centurion. And, and, uh, and again, Christ said, well, go and your servant will be healed. Uh, but I wanna, what I really want is verse 16. When evening had come, uh, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits and the word and healed all who were sick. Now, it doesn't say how many they brought, but obviously they brought everybody they could find. I mean, if you had a sick brother or mother, or I would take myself with Barry, my son Barry. And if one of you uh, could, say, be healed, you know, God gave you that power. You're not the healer. We understand that. All you are is the instrument God's working through. Uh, and let's say uh, Jared back here uh, would say, be healed and you were healed. Don't you think I'd go get Barry? You bet I would. All I got to do is call him. He'd come on his own. <laughs> yeah, they, and he healed them all. See, my point is, he healed them now. Not a week from now, not a year from now. He healed them all. Oh, I've, I've heard this as well. And it is true, but it doesn't really fit, fit healing that well. Well, they'll be healed when they're resurrected. Well, yeah. <laughs> Pat will be. Yeah, she will be. Uh, but what, I guess God uh, chose not to heal her because it was time for her to die. As simple as that. As simple as that. Uh, let's see. Chapter 12 of Matthew. 12 through 15. 12. 12 through 15. Of how much more value uh, th 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 then is a uh, man uh, than a sheep. Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. He's talking about you know, pulling sheep out of the, uh, out of the uh, ditch. Then he said to the man, stretch, man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored as uh, whole as the other. Now, he just told the man to do something. Stretch your hand out, that's all. He didn't say be healed. Uh, he didn't touch them all. 
He did some. Of course, the lady that touched the hem of his garment, it was her faith. He even told her her faith because she just knew if she could just do that one little thing, she would be healed. And, 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 but, but you know, there's, there's a lot to healing. Don't get me wrong. I'm merely talking about why he doesn't do it today, instantly. Uh, I want to go on a little bit here. Then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him. There we are. How they might destroy him. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from them, and a great multitude followed him, and he healed them all. A great multitude. If, you, if God gives you that ability, are you going to have a great multitude following you? Oh, my, yes. You will not know, you won't realize there were so many sick people in your life. And you may even have some well people as well. Uh, ch chapter 9 of Matthew. Back up just one here. Now this one just goes a little bit further. 23. 23. Then Jesus came into the ruler's house, and he saw a flute player and a noisy crowd wailing. And he said to them, Make room for the girl is not dead. See, they had told her this girl's dead. But she sleeps. <laughs> Can you imagine? They ridiculed him. Well, of course they would. She's laying there all stressed out. Uh, you know, in our time, she would have been embalmed already. Could Christ really raise somebody up from the dead that's been embalmed? I think so. He put the blood in there in the first place. Anyhow, and uh, they re ridiculed him. Then when the crowd was put out, he got rid of them. Now, we're going to find he does these things for a reason. He went in and he took her by the hand, and the girl arose. Well, how about that? He went in and took her by the hand. Of course, it was his faith. But God says, you'll be able to do that. Oh, now, that's kind of scary now when you think about it. He said, you will do greater things. Do you suppose he will give you the authority to raise somebody from the dead? Now, I'm not saying you go out to the graveyard and go along and be, be raised, be raised, and so on. But someone that has died and they're laying there in a casket and everybody's mourning and you walk in. That scares me. I'll tell you, that scares me. And I have a reason for <laughs> feeling a little nervous. I'll give you part of it only. All right, let's take a quick look at the apostles. Acts, the third chapter. Did they heal anyone? Acts 3. <clears throat> uh, let's see. First uh, 12 verses. Now, Peter and John went up to gather in the temple at the hour of prayer, at the ninth hour, and a certain man was lame, and uh, he saw them, and I'm just going to paraphrase a little bit here, and uh, he went it all. He, he, he's sitting there begging. And uh, when Peter saw and John uh, uh, went, went into the temple, he asked him of alms, and, he, and, they, uh, he, and fixed his eyes on him, they did, uh, with John and Peter, and they said to him, Look at us. Now, that's what they said. Look at us. That's Peter and John. <clears throat> so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Yeah, he did all right. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he got up and walked. That's Peter and John. They had the ability, they had the authority to heal someone instantly. Remember I already read, he's not a respecter of persons. Not a respecter of persons. Chapter 5. Uh, Acts chapter 5, 12 through 16. 5, 12 through 16. And uh, see, though the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were uh, done among the people. All right, and it tells us right here, many signs and wonders. And they were all with one accord uh, in Solomon's porch. Now, uh, yet now none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly and believed, uh, and, and believers were increasing. Uh, increasingly added to the eternal, multitudes by both men and women, uh, so that they might, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on the beds and the couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. And as a multitude gathered them and so on, uh, I think that's all. Well, yeah, let me read 16. 
let's see, as a multitude gathered from the surrounding city in Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were uh, tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Peter and John didn't even... Now, I don't really think they sat there and said, Now, all right, now, do you know the Messiah? Uh, you have the faith that he is uh, the, the Messiah. You, you have the faith that he can heal you. I don't think they did anything like that. They merely looked down and said, Be healed. Be healed. The people Christ healed weren't believers. They weren't people God had called. They were people out here in, 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 in the uh, city. But God healed them, or Christ healed them, for a reason. To identify himself, to draw attention to himself. So people would see him, and so eventually they would want to kill him, and did kill him. You begin to get a little nervous? Uh, one more, chapter 28. And verse 8, one verse. Acts 28, 8. Twenty-eight, eight. And it happened that the father of uh, Phileas lay sick of a fever and dysentery. Uh, Paul went in to him and prayed, and he laid his hands on him and he healed him. Boom, right there and then. Done. Done. Now, it was not Christ's time. Remember he said, it is not yet my time. Now, let's notice for a second here the instructions he gave people that he had healed. Do you know what the instructions were quite often? Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Well, let's take a look. Matthew 8. Matthew 8. There was a reason for that. It was not yet his time. Matthew 8. And verse 4. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift of Moses commanded uh, for, as a testimony to them. Because he had just healed a leper. Boy, you talk about, <laughs> you talk about being a notarized person. Because leprosy was considered to be so contagious, they would walk on the other side of the street. They wouldn't get near them. He had just healed one. And he told him, don't tell anybody. Because, you see, if everybody knows this and it gets to be too much, and it's growing too much, growing too big, too fast, they'll kill him too soon. Or at least try to. Now, we understand God is going to make sure he dies at the same at the right time. But his time was not yet. His time for what? To die. That's what he was talking about all along. His time to die was not yet. We're going to find he does make a statement just before they captured him. He said, my time is at hand. Oh, different now. Uh, let me see. Let me read a couple more of these. Uh, John 6, let's see. Yeah, no, Matthew 16. Matthew 16 and verse 20. 16:20. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was the Christ. What? He told his disciples, don't go out here telling them. It's not time for him to die yet. That's what he's talking about all the way along. Mark 7. Mark 7. Verse 36. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but more. But the, the more he commanded them, the more why they, they proclaimed it. Remember he had these ten guys that uh, he healed, and the, uh, one of them came back to thank him. The others went out just telling all over the world. Well, of course, he knew human nature. They are going to spread it around. But he is showing us that it is not yet his time. Oh, let's see. All right. Why tell no one? I've got two or three more I can read, but I think that, is that enough? We understand he does not want to become too notorious is the word I was looking for. He does not want to become too notorious and too well known too early. 
It's the same way with you and me. We become known too early, and uh, it's not going to be good. All right, here's why. John. (coughs) We're going to let the Bible tell us. John, the fifth chapter. The fifth chapter of John, why, that's just barely starting in his ministry, isn't it? Well, let's take a look. (coughs) Verse 15 through 18. Uh, John 5, 15 through 18. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Uh, Let's see, this is the one by the pool that got up and walked. Uh, For this reason, the Jews uh, persecuted Jesus. They persecuted him. They didn't like it. They were losing members, and they sought to kill him. The fifth chapter of John, not the end of the book when they killed him. They sought to kill him way, way up there because he had done these things on the Sabbath. Oh, he's a Sabbath breaker. It's kind of interesting. He did a lot of these on the Sabbath. Kind of interesting. It drew more attention as well. He did want attention, but he only wanted it a certain amount at a certain time. As I say, the, the thing with, the, with uh, Lazarus really capped it off. But Jesus answered them and said, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, he also said to God that, that God was his father, may him see equal with God. Well, he said he was equal with God. That's another sermon. Chapter 7. Same book, John. First verse. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. He did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. He got out of Judea and went to uh, Galilee for safety. So they wouldn't be out there and he's he's having to duck them every, every time. They wanted to kill him. Verse 19. Same book. Same chapter. 19. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you uh, keep the law. Why do you seek to kill me? He was facing right up front. Why do you seek to kill me? Verse 25. Now some of them from Judea said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? I mean, the people even know they're trying to kill him. The 8th chapter, verse 37. They're right here close. 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my words are no, have no place in you. I speak what I, uh, I have said to the, the Father and so on. I just wanted the one verse. And then verse 40. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. They wanted to kill him, and we're only into verse, uh, what is it, uh, 9 or 8. Now, do you see why he said, don't tell anyone? Do you see why he said, my hour is not yet? It all had to be timed out. It was not yet time for him to die. All right, his hour did come, though, Matthew 26. Well, of course, at the end of the chapter, I mean the end of the book, Matthew 26, and verse 18, 26, 18, and he said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. In other words, it is time for me to die. Now, this, of course, is uh, they're preparing that last Passover meal for him. And he's going to die uh, the, the, the next day. But now it's time. Now it's time. Now, you're beginning to see what I'm talking about when I said it is not yet time. Oh, let's see. John 17. Let's read that one. And then we'll move on. John 17. I generally look up about... Five times as many scriptures as I need. <laughs> then when I'm preaching to you, I start dropping them off. <laughs> uh, it's, it's tempting to not read a lot of them. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. And here, of course, he's praying. And uh, his hour had come. He knew that. He knew when the hour was. 
Can you imagine going through your life knowing the day and the hour and the minutes you're going to die? And you're going to work toward to make sure it happens at that time? That's, <laughs> that's a kind of a cold feeling, isn't it? But yet that was his job. That's why he came to this earth, to die for us, to die for the world. And he did. He did what he was told to do. All right. Our time has not yet come. You see, when he said, my hour has not yet come, that was a prophecy. Am I right? Absolutely. A prophecy of what? His first, I mean, his, his death. His death. Now, that prophecy is being exercised again. It is not time for him to return to this earth. A spiritual prophecy this time, it always happens that way with one exception. Physical first, spiritual second. It's not time for him to return to this earth. If he gave us the ability to heal people, what would happen to us? Well, his church would disappear pretty quick because they would be killed off. The world will not put up with it. We need to just think that way. They will not put up with it. It is not yet time for Christ's return. When it is time, it is time for the world to know who his people are. And he's going to do that through miracles of healing. That's how they knew Christ. We're out here preaching. Uh, what I gave in Austin and Ronnie and Waco goes out over the Internet. And anybody out there can hear it. Does it make any difference to people? They, oh, boy, there's a true, true believer. <laughs> They say, oh, there's a nut or something. <laughs> yeah. When it is time, <clears throat> he will heal instantly by us for his glory. How is he going to call all these people to this end time? How's he going to do that? They're going to see what we're doing. They're going to say, I, I want that. That's of God. I want to be a part of that. And they're, you're going to have people following you by the groves. Yes. And you have people wanting to kill you by the groves as well. I, I, I said, uh, supposing I walked into a hospital and healed everybody in there. I already told you that one. The doctors would be furious. They wouldn't be happy. And then when the religious leaders found out about it, they would be furious because they know what's going to happen to their people because they can't heal anyone. All your fakes out there. Oh, now we're down to the fakes. Uh, how do I tell you this? I didn't even have all of this last week. Didn't even have all of this last week. I did mention last week, and I'll, I'll do that first, and I'll tell you how it came about. On the way to church, I'm, 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 I roll this in, in my mind for hours and days. And I happen to think, what would make a good example of healing someone and the world would know it wasn't a fake? My old friend, I didn't know my friend, but I know him, or I mean I know of him. You know Stephen Hawkins? How many know Stephen? You know who I'm talking about. The guy in a wheelchair, slumped over, can't talk, use a computer and so on. Can't move. Yeah. I said, supposing God... Gave me the power to heal. And I walk, and he's on stage. And cameras are on him, and it's going out over the, over the TV. And I walk up to him and say, Stephen, get up out of that chair and walk. And he gets up and walks out. Now, the world knows that is not a fake. The world knows that is not a fake. What kind of notoriety would that bring on us? What would they be asking me? Now, here's the best part of this. When I was in Pennsylvania, I bought a, 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 a Blu-ray uh, 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 DVD. Now, I bought, bought the Blu-ray because it was cheaper than a regular DVD. I think they had it mismarked, but they had a price on it, not me. And, and so I bought the Blu-ray. I have a play, player at home. I couldn't play it at the cabin because it's a, a regular DVD player. I had totally forgotten there's a DVD in there as well as Blu-ray. I knew that because I bought them before. Totally forgot it. So I laid it up to watch when I get home. Uh, let's see. I think it was Friday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Friday a week ago. I got it out in the afternoon and I'm working on my sermon and put it in. And it's a very, very good movie. And uh, 
it's, it's going along, and I don't remember something happened. I needed to turn it off, so I, I, I hit the pause and and, uh, and turned it off. Normally, it take come back on before you leave them off. And I came back in, turned it back on, and the player turned on, but it wouldn't play. I hit the button, wouldn't play. Put a new battery, wouldn't play. Went up, hit the button, wouldn't play. <sighs> So I grab another DVD, put it in, plays fine. Grab another, plays fine. Put that one back in, wouldn't play. Would not play. Wouldn't even come up to the menu or anything. Would not play. So in frustration, I put it down. I said, well, I guess I've got a bad DVD. And then I went to church and uh, gave my sermon. and mentioned this, what I have about uh, 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 Hawkins. Well, Sunday afternoon, I thought, I'm going to try that dumb thing one more time. So I put it in, up it comes, please fine. Oh, oh, well, okay, now I feel a little better. Until I get toward the end of the movie, and uh, Hawkins came to the United States, and he's in condition, a wheelchair and everything. And he's on stage, they have it in an auditorium, and they had the questions that they had asked earlier, because he could only write four, four words a minute. So obviously he can't answer them in, in, you know, uh, immediately. And uh, they asked him the first two uh, uh, questions, and, and he, of course, played. You've seen him on TV probably, and the computer uh, does the voice and so on. Then the third man got up, and he said, uh, Dr. Hawkins, uh, why do you not believe in God, or something like that? And everything was real quiet. He sat there, and boom, this pencil fell on the floor. This girl up front dropped the pencil. And he looked down at that pencil and sat there, you know, kind of, you know, how he was looking down at that pencil. And, and uh, oh, a little bit of time went by, and the man got up again and says, Well, Dr. Hawkins, I ask you a question. Why do you not believe in God? And he didn't take his eyes off that pencil, just kept looking at it. Then all at once, oh, I came unglued. He raised his head up, brought his arms up, his feet got up, walked down, picked the pencil up, and handed it to her. I'm saying, no, that never happened. What are you people doing? He walked back up, sat back down, went right back to the same condition. Then I realized he was thinking. He was thinking, if God was real, I wouldn't be sitting here like this. That turned me kind of cold because I had just you know, said that very thing about him. Now, I'll take it one step further. He's still alive, by the way. He lives in England. I'll take it one step further. I just thought of this as Lucille and I were driving over here this morning. Supposing he dies. Well, there goes that one. Oh, no, 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 no. He's laying in a coffin now. I'll just use myself as an example. And anybody. I walk in and say, Dr. Hawkins, get up out of that coffin. And he gets that. Now, are you going to fake this? In the first place, you can't fake him. And the world sees it. But if you do it while he's in a coffin, oh my, what kind of trouble are you in? I don't know. God is definitely going to let the world know he's alive, he's real, and he's going to let the world know he has people here. And why do you think we're going to be uh, uh, oh, crucified? Not crucified. What's the word I want? Persecuted. Persecuted, yeah, thank you. Why do you think they're going to persecute us? Well, we've generally said, well, because we keep the Sabbath. Well, I won't deny that, uh, but a lot of people keep the Sabbath. And God wants his people out in the open where they can be seen. He never hides. Okay, aren't we supposed to be the light of the world? How are you going to do that if you're hiding? Hiding behind you know, some other religion or something. You're going to shine all right. You may not shine very long. A light bulb shines brightest just before it burns out. <laughs> but isn't that an interesting thought? Raise him up out of the coffin. Christ did. He said we would do greater things. This one would be televised around the world. How many people would see that and say, whoa. I know that was Dr. Hawkins. We know he was dead. Well, in the first place, we know he can't walk and so on. No, when I saw that uh, DVD, though, that uh, really turned me cold because of the fact I had mentioned. I see, had I seen it beforehand, okay, now it's, it plugs in. It's a very good uh, DVD. You, you, you ought to watch it.
And the, the man that plays the part is absolutely fabulous. I said, if he didn't get an Oscar for it, there's something wrong. I mean, he just looked like uh, the doctor. You know, the way he acted and so on. All right. People will be intending to turn to God's people. They'll want to know, what do I have to do to become like you? That's what Israel was supposed to do. They were supposed to be a light of the world. And the world was supposed to go to them and say, I like what I see. What do I have to do to be like you? God is going to do that before it is all over. Miraculous healings stand out. Oh, calling you know, fire down from heaven is one thing. Uh, that, I guess, can probably be fake too nowadays. But miraculous healing, when they know the person was dead or they know the person was blind and there's no doubt about it, that is going to get a lot of attention. <coughs> Again, you will be hated by the authorities. They won't like it at all. There goes Obamacare down the drain. <laughs> when it is time for Christ's return, sometime before that, and he wants the world to know, and he's getting the world ready, he's getting the people that he's going to call the great end time. How is he going to call them? How were you called? Something you heard, most people, you know, TV or, or, or radio and so on, and some of what they read. What they see and hear. What they see and hear. So why doesn't God heal today? Too early. Remember, buddy? Go back to bed. Good night. Too early. Too early. That's why. Not because he doesn't want to. All right. Some may, may continue to, to, uh, to be sick as a lesson to be learned. But I have to wonder about some people like uh, Pearl Robert Bruce. What kind of world lesson does he need to learn? Or, or uh, uh, Darwin Jarvis. All right, God kept him alive for two years. But it's not a very pleasant life, really, to be sick like that. When God is ready, when his time is ready, we're going to know. Because you're going to see miraculous healings. And you're going to see them coming from the house of God and the church of God. Because God is going to put us in the limelight for His glory.